All right, I want to welcome everybody that's joining us now from uh, around the world, TV, but radio, and by live streaming. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net uh, for the entirety of the program. If you're watching my TV, please give someone a call. Tell them what channel that you're watching and invite them to come into our service. If you're watching by Facebook, please consider sharing this on your timeline. This will allow other people uh, to join us in our service here in Glasgow, Kentucky. Kentucky. We're going to be reading today in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. We're going to be learning about the Father's love. Amen. We've got a God that loves us today. Amen. You and I are important to him. Amen. And there, we've got an enemy also, and his name is Satan. And he's came forth for nothing but to kill and to steal and to destroy. He is trying his very best, amen, to try to cause you pain and to cause you hurt and sorrow. He's doing his very best, amen, to try to find a way to pick your head, to pick your brain, amen, and find out how he can get, amen, into your mind and into your soul, amen, so he can hinder and damage you, amen, and destroy, and if possible, doom you to a devil's hell where he is bound to go one day after a while. His fate is sealed. He can never repent. He can never get out, amen, of the fate that is sealed for him. But you and I, amen, we can. Thank God for that. Amen. We can have ups and downs. We can even be in and out. Amen. Thank God. It's not over until it's over. But the devil's doing all he can if you're in to get you out. Amen. Listen, if you're out, he's trying his best to keep you out. Amen. Any way that he can through lies and deception. Amen. If he can, he'll send somebody. Amen. To distract you. Amen. From the truth and from finding the peace of God. Real peace only comes with a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Real joy. Joy that that's unspeakable and full of glory can only be obtained, amen, through the precious Holy Ghost, amen, and he will only come into our hearts when we have repented and gave our hearts and our minds to the Lord. The Lord today is looking for a people that wants to serve him, amen, through the good times and also through the bad times, amen, thank God, amen, he loves us, Thank God. He is long-suffering. He is patient. Amen. But let me put the warning out. There will be a day, amen, that the warnings, amen, will end. And time shall end. And your last opportunity, amen, to make peace with God will be passed. Amen, and you will not be able to repent. Be careful that you don't allow the devil, amen, to get you out, keep you out, uh, to block you, to hinder you, amen, from receiving, uh, amen, what that you, amen, can have from God. And here's the thing we need to understand. The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. God wants every human being on this planet, male or female, black, white, red, yellow, amen, or brown. It doesn't matter who we are, large or small, poor or rich. Amen. God loves us all exactly the same. And he showed his love by giving his son to die on the cross. Now this story that I'm going to be reading about today is about two sons. Amen. And the opportunity that both sons had, amen, to have everything that the Father had offered them, and one of them, amen, uh, straight away, amen, from the things that God had for them, and the other one held fast, amen, to the promises of God, amen, and build it upon, amen, the solid foundation of faith in what the Father had promised, amen, and he had joy. Praise his holy name. Amen. Today you can live a happy life or you can be miserable. 
The choice is yours. You can be heaven bound or you can be hell bound. Amen. But one place or the other, you're headed in one of those two directions today. Amen. So I hope today that you're headed toward heaven and not to that awful place called hell. Amen. All right, in St. Luke chapter 15, verse number 11. Amen. It says, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followeth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. St. Luke chapter 12, verse 22, it says, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse or barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubic? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spend not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful mi of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for your mercy. Thanking you, Lord, for your grace and your love. Asking you, Father, to once again hide us behind the shadow of the cross that no glory would come to me. But, Father, that all honor and praise would come to you. I thank you for the joy, Lord, Father, that comes from heaven. And I thank you for your word. Asking you, Lord, to anoint us and to use us to bring you praise, honor, and glory. Father, knowing this day that you are a mighty God, knowing this day that you are a God of love and a God that's there to meet our needs. Father, we pray to deal with the hearts of those that are broken today. Deal with the hearts of those, Lord. Father, that have strayed away from you, that they can find peace, Lord, and they would once again return back to you and live for you, Lord, so that they can make heaven their home. And, Lord, they can get rid of that heavy load of sin and those burdens that so easily, Lord, upsets us. Father, I thank you and I praise you for being such a mighty God. Help me to preach your word in spirit and in power, for we know we need your anointing. And it's the mighty name of Jesus. We do only pray and ask all these things this day. Amen. Looking back into the word of God, this very familiar story, how that this man had two sons. Both of those sons had exactly the same opportunity. Both of those sons were going to receive all of their inheritance, amen, which would have been half, amen, of the kingdom. Each one of the sons would have got, and one of those, amen, took what he got from the father, and he stayed right there, so thankful, amen, for what he received. But the other one took what the father had gave him and decided, I'm going to see what's on the other side of the mountain. I'm going to look, amen, and see what's happening out in the world. And I'm going to be able to enjoy the world and the things that the world has to offer. Somebody told me, you can take some crack and it'll make you high. Somebody told me that you can smoke some meth, amen, or you can take some meth and it'll get you, amen, a really good buzz. And somebody else said that you can drink, amen, some whiskey and it'll make you not care about what's going on in the world. And somebody said there's some little ladies, amen, that really don't care, amen, what you do with them. It's got some short skirts, amen, that's real flirty and and you can have a ball, amen, taking drugs with them, amen, and playing, amen, sin with them. You don't know what you're missing. You need to get out there and see what the world has to offer. See, the devil today, amen, wants to paint a picture, amen, to mankind, amen, and let them think, amen, that church is a drag, amen, that living for God, you're missing out on all of these things that you could have. Yeah, you're missing out, amen, on a liver that's getting hard. You're missing out, amen, listen, on getting killed in a car wreck. And you're missing out on your family, amen, being split up. Yeah, you're missing out on some things, but it's not the things that the devil, amen, wants to paint a picture that you're missing today. Amen, the devil wants to lie to us. Amen, and try to make us think, amen, that you're missing out. Amen, those good things. Everybody is doing the drugs, and the drugs is the end thing. I don't want to pop your bubble, but the Holy Ghost will give me a buzz greater than any of your drugs, and it's done been paid for. Amen, take your rotten mess that's a fake and a phony that's a lie. Amen and shove that in a toilet and flush it before it kills you. It's going to send you to hell. It's going to destroy your life. It's going to cook your brain. Amen. One day after a while, you keep taking it, you'll have to ask somebody where you live because you won't have enough sense. Amen. To be able to find your way home. Well, Brother Jimmy, that ain't going to happen to me. Oh, no, you're special. You're better, amen, than all the other population. 
Yeah, you believe that? I got some swamp land. I want to sell you in Arizona if you believe that. Amen. Listen, that's just not the way that it is. Everybody in prison, amen, thought that those other thieves were idiots and morons. I'm the only one that can rob a bank and do it right because I'm smart. Yeah, they're smart enough to get in jail, smart enough to get caught. They caught somebody at the dollar store this week, 51 years old. Yeah, he's the whole across bar hotel today too. I'm surely, I think that he probably thought, I'm slick, I'm gonna get by with it. Amen, sometimes you can have drugs and alcohol. Amen, addiction that you hurt so bad. If you think, I got the shakes, I'm gonna die if I don't get some of these things. Amen, but I want you to know, amen, there's a God that's big enough, amen, to clean you up, amen, straighten you out, put your home in order, amen, make your wife, amen, love you, amen, listen, make your husband, amen, love you, amen, and he'll paint, amen, the devil will a pretty road, amen, listen, but I want you to know, it's far better, amen, to live for God than it is to live, amen, and be part of the deception, amen, that the devil has. I know I'm preaching to hundreds of thousands of people, amen, on TV and radio, amen, and you've had drugs in your family or maybe even you, amen, have been addicted or may be addicted right now. As I speak, as we go in to 181 countries, amen, around the world, I want you to know that drugs is a lie and it will kill you. Alcohol is a thief and it will steal from you, amen, but the real joy is the love of the Father and how that he gave his son, amen, to die, oh, I feel like preaching, amen, to die on the cross, amen, to set us free, amen, from our sins and then he gave, amen, the third part of the Godhead, amen, which is the Holy Ghost, amen, to live inside of us, amen, that makes us feel taller than a tree, amen, stronger, amen, listen, amen, the of the incredible hawk, amen, it'll make you feel, amen, happier, amen, than a rooster that's crowing, amen, listen, or a bull that's bellering, or a horse that's kicking up its heels, and a nickering, and a running in the sun, amen, he gives us joy, and peace and happiness. Amen, praise the Lord, give him praise, hallelujah. Amen, I'm glad that when I go to bed at night, amen, I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna wake up at. I'll either wake up in Glasgow, Kentucky, or I'll wake up in Hallelujah Avenue. Amen, either way, thank God I'm a winner. Amen, either way, amen, the king, amen, is gonna come for me. Amen, if it's time for me to go, or he's gonna make another day in order. Amen, the Bible says that the footsteps Amen, of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I don't know what he's got for me tomorrow, but I want you to know it won't be an overdose. Amen, it won't be a hangover. It won't be a marriage divorce. Up. Amen, it won't be anything like that. Amen, it'll be nothing but good. It's what God's got planned for me tomorrow. Amen, listen, he'll let me shout and praise him if I choose to. Amen, he'll let me enjoy my salvation if I choose to. Amen, what have you got to look forward to tomorrow? Brother Jimmy, I got another day at the grindstone and I have to go, I hate my job. I hate everybody there. I don't like working. I got a hangover. I'm sick in my stomach. All this mess, it don't do no good. The harder I work, amen, the less I have. Yeah, because the devil's stealing it. Amen, and it's going to the drug dealers. Amen, it's going to the alcohol. Amen, makers today. Amen, I wouldn't let Anheuser-Busch get my money. Amen, listen, I'd put it in the church. Amen, listen, and give my 10%. Amen, and you can live better on 10% than you can on 90% than you can on 100%. Amen, God will give it back to you. Amen, many times over. Amen, and it's the joy that you can have. Amen, the Lord today, amen, has got peace for us. Amen, this one young man, this one son, amen, he thought, man, I got it made right where I'm at. I'm gonna stay right here. I know who butters my bread. I know where the bread maker is. I know who, amen, that feeds me. He's took care of me my entire life and I'm not gonna get away from him. I can tell you that right now. I don't care these false promises. 
amen, that you make him. Amen, every now and then. Amen, if you're married, you'll have somebody come by and say, hello, good looking. I can give you more than that old nag that you married. Hey man, there'll be somebody that'll come by and say, oh, listen, I, I cross all the T's and dot all the I's. What you need to do is run off with me, baby. I got a hot rod forward and a $2 bill. I know a place just over the hill. So to pop and the dancing three, jump right in and come along with me. You say, hey, good looking. What you got a cooking? I got something cooking up with me. Oh, listen, folks, amen, they'll lie to you. Amen, they'll deceive you. Amen, listen, your hope, amen, is the one that God gave you. Hold on to that one. Amen, listen, and believe that God, amen, is gonna make things better. But Jimmy, I'm having some problems out of my spouse. Amen, the most of the problems out of your spouse is you being able to tolerate it. Amen, when you get enough of Jesus, amen, listen, they can get up, not brush their teeth, amen, never comb their hair, amen, look wild-eyed of the morning till they get their three cups of coffee and you'll still want to kiss them. Amen, you get where you need to be with God. Amen, he'll make you happy. Amen, listen, he'll give you joy. Amen, don't look for happiness. Amen, over the hill. Amen, with your $2 bill. Amen, this is what happened to this man. He thought, man, I gotta get a hold of some things. There's some joy and there's some happiness out in this world. I've got to find it. I know that there's more. Amen, you know where I found there was more? Amen, I found there was more in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the more, amen, that I find more, the more that I want more, amen, and the more the, uh, the more that I know that there's more. Does that make sense? Amen, listen, uh, amen, and it keeps a hunger, uh, amen, for God, uh, amen, in my life. See, the Lord today, uh, amen, he's an equal opportunity blesser. Amen, the devil is a liar. Uh, amen, Jesus said in John 8.32, uh, 8, uh, amen, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Also, in that very same chapter number eight, uh, amen, he said the devil is a liar, uh, and he is the father of it. Uh, amen, the devil today, uh, whatever comes out of his mouth, uh, Amen, every time, amen, that he tells you that you don't feel like going to church. Amen, some of you missed it last Sunday and you don't know what you missed. We didn't even have no preaching here last Sunday. Woo-wee, gifts of the Spirit, amen, came forward. Amen, people shouting, some down in the floor. Amen, listen to me. Amen, after being prayed for and anointed, amen, some were healed, one was saved. When we just went on and on and I don't know what time we got out of here. Amen, listen, it was good. Amen, see the devil always wants to talk you in. Amen, to missing out. Amen, on what God has got for you. And he'll put things in your head. Amen, like, well, you need to go a different time or a bunch of junk. Amen, he tells every pastor on Monday morning, you ought to resign. Amen, they didn't receive you preaching like they needed to or they don't appreciate you or they probably won't come back. Amen, I want to speak to the pastor for just a moment. Your people are unstable, amen, and they're more likely to stay that way. Sorry. Amen, you're just gonna have to serve the Lord and quit looking at them. Amen, be there to meet the needs that you have. Amen, those that's ugly, look over the other way. Amen, them that's unstable, amen, just look over the other way. Amen, listen, the Lord said today, amen, he told Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my He said, Peter, do you love me? The third time, and the Lord, and, and Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my sheep. He didn't one time, amen, ever say live their life for them. Amen, and worry yourself to death and get sick and have to go on drugs because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Amen, feed them, back off, and leave them alone. Amen, help them when they call on you, and the most of the time they don't want your help in the first place. Ooh. Amen, I remember something Brother T.D. Jake said one time, and I won't never forget it. He said, quit getting so worn out and tired trying to carry people that don't like to travel. 
Amen. And there's a lot of people just ain't going to travel. Amen. But I want you to know I'm a traveling on. Amen. My heavenly home is somewhere beyond the blue. I'm a traveling on. I'm a moving on. Amen. Listen from one blessing to another. Amen. From one experience with God unto another. Amen. With one prophetic dream unto another. Amen. Listen. And one. Amen. Prophetic vision unto another. And one prophecy. Amen. To another. And one revelation to another. Amen. It's not boring serving God. It's good serving the Lord. So here this man was. Amen. He decided I'm going to take my by I'm tired of here, tired of being around here. It's the same old thing all the time. And that overbearing, hard-headed dad of mine, he just wants me to live right and just work, work, work and be honest. I'm tired of being honest. I want to be a crook. Sometimes the grace looks greener on the other side of the fence. I had an uncle, my grandmother told me one time, said he'd always wanted to be a trash collector. He thought it was awesome for somebody to hang on to the back of a trash truck, jump off and put the trash bins in there. He thought he'd be a cool dude riding through town on the back of the trash truck. So he went and got him a job hauling trash. He wasn't on him but a day or two, he thought I believe I made a mistake. This is just not for me. It's just not cut out for everybody. Some people can haul trash and some people can't. Amen. Listen, you got to find, amen, the tree, amen, that you're supposed to be climbing. Amen. But see, sometimes the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. And he thought, man, there's a big world out there. I've got to see it all. I've got to do it all. I've got to have a taste of every bit of it. Did you ever see anybody that went to a one of these church dinners or they go to a buffet, there's more food wasted at a buffet. Amen. People, especially kids, will waste. They'll look at stuff that looks good, but it don't it tastes yucky when they get it to their table. But if they've got 25 different items, they'll get a great big spoonful of all 25 on five different plates. Amen, and they'll pick over it. Amen, because they don't like, see, there's things that looks good. What we need to do, see, I can tell you pretty much every time I go somewhere what I'm gonna eat because I done found me something good, amen, at that particular place. I can tell you what I get at KFC. Amen, I want original recipe dark meat chicken. And I, and I want me some taters and uh, then I want me some uh, coleslaw. Amen, that's what I want in a big old biscuit. Uh, amen, when I go to McDonald's, uh, amen, I want a number one combo. I want a Big Mac and a fry. Amen, I can tell you what I want at El Mazelon when I go there. Amen, they say, do you know what you want? I say, I can tell you what I want next Sunday. I want a steak fajita with no guacamole. I want unsweet tea with a little slice of lemon. Bring it on. Mark it down every Sunday for the next five years if you want to, if if you want to make it ahead of time. I done found what's good. I'm not finicky and picky and have to find out what all taste I can. Let's listen. I was born in Kentucky. I can tell you what slop looks like, amen, without tasting it. There's some things that I just don't like. Amen. No offense to anybody. I just don't like some things. But what I like, I like. And I found some good things. That's why I look the way that I do. I'm not, I don't look this way because I'm still looking for something good to eat. It's because I done found it and a whole lot of it. Amen. That's why I look this way. Amen. The reason why. Amen. Listen, I'm where I am spiritually today is because I found something good. Amen. And it makes me feel good. And it gives me hope. And God takes care of me in every situation. To whom would I go? To where would I go? Amen. I've got to follow the Lord. It's heaven or bust. Amen. But this young man thought, man, I'm going to get the time tiger by the tail, and he found out when he got the tiger by the tail, it wasn't so much fun. How many learned as a kid that you don't grab a cat by the tail when you're trying to catch him? Woo-wee! Uh-huh. Yeah, this is what happened to that young man. He got the world by the tail, all right. He got the tiger by the tail, and then the tiger turned around and... Hey, man, it sure does hurt. Then you go to crying to mama. Mama, mama, mama. The cat scratched 
me. What'd you do to it? I just pulled his tail in his ears. Oh, is that all? Well, come in here and let's get some of my thigh laid. Hey, Amen. You've done got your education. You won't never pull a cat by the tail anymore unless you got gloves on, amen, or something. You'll protect yourself. This young man got him an education, but he had to suffer, amen. I've heard people say, well, my sins, they're mine. They ain't bother nobody but me. Wrong. They bother everybody that loves you. Everybody that cares about you, they suffer right along with you. Amen, listen, when my children are not doing what they need to do, amen, my heart is heavy, my heart is broken, amen, they got their head up thinking they're having fun because they're in the uh, la-la land with the devil lying to them, I, amen, and they get in a daze, amen, thinking I can do my own thing, live my own life, it'd be all right to have God, but I don't have to have him. You do have to have him. I was sharing this in Sunday school this morning. Amen. There was a woman one time, uh, amen, was asked, uh, this young person asked her grandma, said, uh, uh, Granny, do I have to have the Holy Ghost to make it to heaven? She said, Honey, Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. We need the Spirit of the Lord. You need Jesus with you wherever you're at. It don't matter where you are. You need God in your life. Amen. Listen, he went out into the world, got the world by the tail. Amen. He soon found out when his money ran out, he didn't have any friends anymore. His friends didn't care. Sometimes boyfriends will give you up. Sometimes girlfriends will run off when you don't have any money, when you don't have any drugs, when you don't have any alcohol. They're going to say, I'm going to move on to somebody else that can make me happy. Yeah, but see, they're after the wrong thing. They're not after a home. They're after a good time. And all they're going to do is bleed you. That's why there's some people you can't help financially. Amen, because they're not going to better themselves. They're going to take the money you give them and blow it on righteous living. And you can't help them. All you're going to do is sink yourself along with them. Amen. So you have to be very careful. That's why the scripture tells us not to cast our pearls before swine unless they trample them under their feet, turn again, and rend you. That means rip or steal from you or take from you, amen, and bring you down. See, this young man thought, I, I, I'm going to have it made. When his money ran out, his friends was gone, he didn't have a job, so he had to uh, connect himself, amen, with a citizen of that country that he was in and begin to eat, sw uh, feed the swine and see if you know anything about Jewish custom, amen, that the Jews look at swine through the Mosaic law as being a dirty animal, <coughs> and they are a dirty animal, but they look at them as being a sin to eat their meat. So you can't eat their, uh, their the ungodly type animal. And so he found himself in the worst particular case that he could ever get into. Amen, the worst case scenario, amen, and still be alive. He was hungry and he thought, man, if I can't do nothing else, I can eat the corn in the pig pen. I, I can eat with the hogs, amen. I could get enough money to be able to do that. And he got in there and got to eating with the hogs and he found in there that man, this ain't working. This is terrible. And he said, the Bible says, and when he came to himself, amen, he knew that even his hired servants of his father, amen, had food and more than enough to eat. And he decided, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to the father's house and he don't ever have to accept me of being a son. He don't ever have to accept me that like he once did if he'll just let me be a hired servant. I've learned my lesson. I made a mistake. I don't don't expect special treatment. But see, what he didn't understand was the father saw him coming afar off. There's no doubt in my mind that father got up every morning and looked in the direction that son left and thought, I wonder if this will be the day my boy is coming home. I wonder if this will be the day that I'm going to be able to, uh, to see him. I, I prayed for him. I've worried about him. I, I wonder where he's at. And one morning he saw him. Here come that boy. Amen. From a long ways off across that field. Amen. And the father said, oh, there's my boy, the one 
one that was dead, he's alive again. My one that was lost, he's been found. The one that's blind, he's found his way. He can now see how to get home. Amen. He said, go and get the robe and put on my son. Get the ring and put on his finger. He said, go kill that fatty calf and let's sing, let's dance, let's make merry for my son is home. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. Praise God. See, sometimes, amen, when you fail and you make a mistake, the devil wants to put it in your mind, amen, that God will never receive you. You done done too much. You done went too far. You done been too bad. You done uh, uh, carried on a bunch of foolishness to you done make God mad at you and he ain't going to hear you. He's not going to answer your prayer. You won't be welcome anymore. There was a recitation that I heard uh, many years ago in my early years of ministry. It's been on the radio and, and stuff many times down through the years. And in this recitation, there was a young man uh, that had uh, got about 18, 19 years old, and he got cocky and smart, and he, him and his dad had an argument, and he struck his dad. And he'd been uh, using verbal abuse toward his mother. And the dad told him, son, I hate it, but you're going to have to leave. You can't stay in my house and talk to your mom this way. And you're not going to hit me and, and put your feet under my table. You're going to have to leave. So the young man packed up all his belongings and he went out and he decided I'm going to live my life and I'm going to do whatever I want to when I get ready. I don't need mom and dad. I don't need you. So he went on out in his life and everything went wrong and he was so broken and so miserable and a year uh, went by and he finally decided uh, I'm going to write mom and dad a letter and I, I'm going to tell them that I'm going to be on the train this coming Wednesday morning uh, when he comes through their town and then I'm going to write in that letter and I'm going to ask them uh, if it's okay if I come home. If I can't come home, it'll be all right. But if it's all right for me to come home, just tie a little rag up in the apple tree in the backyard and I'll see it from the railroad track and from the windows of the train and then and they live just a little ways from the station uh, uh, where he would be getting off and he said if there's a white rag in that apple tree he said I'll get off and I'll come home if there's no white rag I'll know that I'm not welcome and I'll go on and I'll do the best that I can and he was going up the, uh, the track that morning and there was a man sitting beside him and he said son you look awful blue today he said, well, I'm scared. I'm a little bit worried. And he told him what all that he had done and how that he had lived and what he had done to his dad. He told him about the letter and how that he said, if there's just a white rag in that apple tree, I'll know it's okay to get off of the train. He said, I can't stand to look. He said, I wonder, mister, if you do me a favor. He said, I'm going to look down. And I'm just going to sit here and pray. And he said, you let me know uh, if it's okay. Uh, if there's a white rag in that tree, you let me know. He said, I can't even bear to look because I'm scared. They'll never let me come home. He said, all right. He said, it'll be right around this next bend. There'll be a little white house and there'll be an apple tree in the backyard. I'm going to put my head down. You tell me if there's a white rag. They got on around. He could feel the train making the turn around on the track. Just a moment, that man said, son, I don't think he got anything to worry about. He said, that tree is full of rags. He said, there's probably over 100 white rags in that tree, and there's an old gray-haired mom and dad standing in the backyard, and they're waving a bed sheet that says, come home, son, come home. He, he said, I believe you're all right. I believe it's all right to come home. I'm thankful that we've got a God that's full of mercy and grace. I'm thankful that we've got a God, amen, that loves us. I'm thankful that we can't be too bad and we can't go too far amen that he don't have mercy for us I'm thankful today it don't matter how stupid that we feel amen if we feel like that we're so low that we can't even crawl out from under a rock and the whole world's going to call us a snake all I'm going to say is slither out from under it son or daughter there's a God that'll pick you up amen and he'll love you amen there's a God amen that'll take you back amen there's a God today amen 
to put his white rag in the apple tree, amen, by putting his son on the cross, amen, to die for whomsoever will. Let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Thank God for the plan of salvation. Thank God, amen, he's married to the backslider and he'll take you back again. Amen, thank God. Amen, for those of you that are watching by television and listening by radio and watching by live streaming, amen, you may have a death sentence, amen, because that you've sinned and you've done wrong and the doctor said you've only got but a short time and the devil told you you done messed up and you're doomed. If you come out of the devil's mouth, you ought to know it's a lie. Amen, the Lord, amen, is offering you, amen, a safe return back to home. Amen, listen, when that young man, amen, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 15, got home, amen, instead of finding a dad with a club to beat him in the head and a bunch of scolding words, you know what that dad done? He come down out of that house, he run out across that yard, he grabbed that son. The Bible says he fell on his neck and he kissed him. Amen, because he's so glad to see him come home. Amen, and he told everybody, he said, go get my robe. That robe means my robe, the family robe. It's got my name on it. I want him to know this is a Wilson. I'm gonna use a Wilson name because that's my last name. This means it belongs to the Wilson family. Amen, I want that robe and everybody to see this is my son. I'm not ashamed of him. He's repented of his ways and he's come to me for grace. He's came to me for mercy. He's came to me wanting forgiveness. You give him that robe, amen, so that he'll know that I'm giving him a robe of honor. (laughs) Well, glory, I'm giving him a robe of honor, amen, to know that he has been accepted. He said, put my ring on his finger. And the ring means uh, unending love. Uh, the symbol, when you get married, uh, they put that ring on the finger. That means uh, that's forever and ever. See, a ring, uh, amen, you start right here and you go all the way around and you wind up at the same place. Uh, if you go the other direction and go all the way around, you'll still wind up in the same place. Uh, what he's trying to say is, give him the ring. This ain't gonna happen anymore. <laughs> give him the ring, uh, and put it on his finger and let him know that I'll love him. It it don't matter what he does. It don't matter how far that he goes. Amen, let him know that I love you. Woo, boy, if I was lost, I'd get saved today. If I was backslidden, I'd run. I wouldn't wait for the invitation. Amen, I'd knock the flowers and everything else out of my way and I'd come pray. Amen, so the Lord, amen, or the Father let him know that it's okay. He said, get some shoes for his feet. I want him to have comfort. I don't need him walking in the muck anymore. He had to work in the pulk pen, but he ain't gonna work in the hog pen in my house, and he's got some shoes of protection. Aren't you glad you got boots that you can wear to the barn? Ain't you glad you got boots you can wear out in the muck? Oh, thank God for that. He put him on some shoes that you won't have to be out there in that muck. I'll get you some shoes you can slip on. You can slip them back off when you come into my house. (laughs) And you'll be able to eat with me at my table in honor. Amen. He said, now let's make music. He said, go kill the fatty calf. And at that time, it was custom once per year. They would put a calf up. They would fatten that calf a whole year. Then when they got ready to have some type of great, wonderful feast, they'd bring that calf out. They'd kill that calf. They'd quarter it out, and whatever they would do, and they would cook that calf, and everybody would eat. They would call the neighbors from miles around to come in. We're having a party of all parties. We've killed the fatty calf. This is just not a Saturday night rook game with Diet Coke. This is a big party. This is a monster party. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be singing. We're going to have us a time. My son's come home. I've worried myself to death about him, but he's finally had enough of what the devil's done to him, and he's decided I'm returning home, and he's coming home to stay. Thank God. Let's celebrate. So before the feast of the year, he killed that calf prematurely, 
early. Amen. Because his son was going to be coming home, was going to be greater than any type of feast. It didn't matter what would happen the remainder of the year. There's nothing going to surpass my son coming home. See, today, if you're his son or you're his daughter, you may have made some mistakes. He wants you to come home. He wants you to come to him. He don't want you to be afraid to pray. He don't want you to be reluctant to come and to call on him. He wants you to understand, I love you. (laughs) Won't you come home? I love you. I paid the price. I sent my son to die on the cross. Come just like you are. Would you stand with me this morning all over the house? Those that's watching my television, give us a call. If you need prayer, God bless you and good day.